we are now in the conference hall of the old building where there is a court hall just beside this and all these photographs that you see over here are the former chief judges. Actually, this old building functions from Friday only. Chief Justice Simon carries this court in the new building for whole of the week, but on Friday, the court functions in the court hall of old building court, and this is the chamber attached to that. Alright, so this is the uh, court of the Honorable uh, Chief Justice, and this is the court uh, in the new in the old building. Normally, the Chief Justice's court is a division bench. Division bench means in simple terms two judges. That is what is known as a division bench. So basically there are a certain roster of cases which the Chief Justice's court takes up in division bench. And there are certain roster of cases which the Chief Justice himself takes in single bench. And uh, the High Court uh, every week or at least a uh, couple of times a month we have a bench composition. So every judge is assigned certain types of matters. So supposingly there is a decision in the single bench, it again goes up to the uh, division bench as a writ appeal. Okay. So there is a trend, let's say that a particular case has always been going to the writ appeal. So thereafter this uh, chief justice with the master of the roster, he can decide that why a case should actually be with a single judge, then again come after a division bench. It can come directly to a division bench. Okay. Law is basically same all over India specific that some land laws, some personal laws, it will be specific to a particular state. So once you study law, you can actually appear all over the country. For a practicing lawyer, there is no bar. States have no bar. You can practice anywhere. Oh, or yeah. in any high court, in a Supreme Court also. If you actually, uh, let's say you study law in England, okay, the laws of England are very similar to laws in India because we have adopted a lot of laws from it. But the problem for you it will be that after reading the laws of another country, you will be coming into a country in which you have not read any laws. So it will be a whole new process for you. So the Bar Council actually doesn't allow the first phase, that is the initial law degree doesn't allow the lawyers of the other countries to actually practice unless they are associated with another lawyer of our country. Let's say there is a case of England which needs to be filed in India. There is an English lawyer, not an Indian lawyer, there is an English lawyer. So he needs to actually get in touch with an Indian lawyer to file the case. Thereafter, he can place his case on record about what is the English, uh, what is the English laws, or if his client is an, uh, of, uh, of UK, so he can present his case, uh, case. But he cannot directly file a case here. Okay, cases are being heard every day. The High Court, uh, he will give you the exact figure. Around 800 cases are disposed of every day. Our constitution has been adopted from five different co countries. Okay, so what we did was we studied all their laws. We decided that what was best in each of their laws and we adopted some from the UK constitution, from the, uh, some from the US constitution. Supposedly there is a new matter which has never been decided by this court. So we actually want to know that what the US has done, what the UK has done in that matter. So we need a reference material. The, uh, so therefore we keep the journals of all the countries to see that if something has not been dealt by our country, if it has been dealt by their country, so we can take a reference. And it is not practically possible to have all the law books in one own house. So we need to have a library. So when the judge actually requires a particular law or the advocates need to refer a particular law of that country, there should be a centralized library which each and everyone can access, they can study. So this is the new conference hall where essentially the new judges who are elevated to the high court, they take their oath. So now we'll see an oath taking ceremony. This is the very room where this video has been shot. This is also live on YouTube. Hi. I, Sri Gauri Sankar Satpati, having been appointed a judge of the High Court of Orissa. So we have a protocol, we have a tradition, but who administers oath to whom? It is as per tradition that the Chief Justice will administer oath to a particular person. And these are the journals which are there. These are the All India Reporters on which primarily uh, as lawyers and judges place reliance. These books, uh, orange colored books, these are bare acts. Right, and they are mostly alphabetical order. Let's say for arbitration act to, you know, it goes on. All all single acts are there, and this court is a paperless court. Yes, it yes. That there are no physical files here. Let's say we are referring to a uh, in our argument we are referring to a judgment of the year 1970 or 1980. All these books are here, and if this book is here, we can ask for reference. At times we give a slip to the court master. So there is a court master here. You can see his chair. 
so we we usually give a slip to the court master that this is a citation please when this item is taken up please take out this book for uh, the judges uh, reference so that is why the library is there that is how i say that it is a very taxing job and we have to study every day yes, so as judges and as lawyers so we, we no matter how hard we try we can't we have to know everything whenever i have a guidance regarding something okay, i will obviously be good at it so i will obviously have an advantage so like i was saying that the purpose of this visit is to actually make you knowledge that how the court functions and everything so what in happened in the covid which actually was very unexpected and uh, very actually dangerous also so uh, the court proceedings start for about 21 days and thereafter in the 21 days we have to make out that how the proceedings will eventually we had to come back so what we did was like the uh, like the schools adopted the uh, high, uh, what do you say uh, virtual classes so we started uh, virtual hearings so this hearing mode is called hybrid hearing now present it was virtual hearing now it is called hybrid hearing we adopted the system let's say that uh, a particular uh, advocate is let's say at uh, delhi he has gone for delhi for a hearing so he will not be able to come to this particular case or earlier what happened was that the litigant used to come to the uh, court to hear his case so supposingly let's say the litigant is a bombay when he will have to come all over to odisha to actually hear his case for a hearing which hardly will take about 10 minutes for 10 minutes he will have to travel two days in And this hybrid hearing what you have done is the software you see is let's say the chief justice takes up 80 cases a day so it is published one day before the chief justice court is also a paperless court you will see that no case records that there are on his table so now we are going to see the hearing uh, i am actually absolutely delighted that he was the government counsel in that who was actually looking after the chiliga case so we'll have that hearing now i am i am uh, appearing for the state and and uh, They uh, 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 emphasis and uh, my uh, they are not willing to stop using uh, that motor boat through the main channel. In this particular case, the the uh, collector of uh, Puri, uh, Khorda and Ganjam, because uh, Kendrapada also, because those are the four adjoining districts. They were also in the VC. Now, because we have this hybrid hearing, the Chilika Development Authority did his office work till 11. Okay, thereafter he joined in this proceeding. and after let's say this proceeding ended at 1 he could have joined back in the office and uh, uh, did his regular office work so he is in his office only because of this hybrid hearing so it it, it has now been permitted by the uh, high court that you can if you are not appearing physically you can appear in virtually so what kind of cases are uploaded so because some people like say uh, personal cases are, are taken up in courts people so, might not want them public so, so we have a particular uh, uh, live streaming rules in our high court so there are particular cases like supposingly let's say uh, writing cases politically motivated cases offenses against women yes. okay divorce cases okay or a particular case which a advocate doesn't want to be broadcasted like he has to give a written application okay. the court will then decide whether it is to be broadcasted or not sir as we have seen in movies the judges use order that hammer part so do we have that in real court or okay. is just that the hammer is called a havel uh, no a gavel sorry yeah. gavel havel. that is called a gavel okay. so uh, it's kind of a tradition it is not absolutely followed in the court so from your questions actually i under, understand is that you are kind of think that both the advocates fight with each other okay 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 so those are all in the movies okay that rarely happens in the court because their person is not to win a fight between each two their person is to convince that person over there that my point is correct yes sir. okay so their ultimate aim is to justify the particular law and to convince that person so they don't have to fight with each other they, they only have to convince him so it also like we have a now economically criteria which has been added in i think 1989 or something it has been added that a, if a particular obc classes if they go beyond a particular uh, amount they have to give a certificate that my parent is earning this much amount of money in this particular financial year for that particular year to get a reservation so a economically backward class in the obc class has also been added so this wealthier class has also been added now So supposingly there is a dispute regarding that particular thing. So they can come to the court. In fact, right now, last year uh, during the NEET exam, yes. the medical NEET UG PG exam, this entire uh, criteria was being uh, the government took a lot of time to actually conduct surveys and find out uh, how many of the backward uh, OBC uh, category uh, candidates belong to this uh, about their per capita income and all. The creamy layer that is yes. called the creamy, creamy layer. layer. Creamy layer. Yes. No, no. The court doesn't have to say anything on it unless it, it comes. It will not give any suggestions. Sir. It will not give any suggestions or anything unless a dispute comes before the court that this policy or this law framed is wrong. The court doesn't have a say in it at all. Then at court of records, Supreme Court, 
it can formulate a, a decision. It can give a decision that will be at bar as a law. Uh, unless so a legislature comes up with a law, till then that judgment becomes a law. Supposingly, I feel, uh, supposingly the High Court feels that no, uh, probably the, his life is in danger. What it can do is it can transfer to another state also. Okay. So, so the rarely the person who is make, going to make a threat, he knows that this threat is very useless. This building has four floors. The ground floor and first floor is dedicated to State Legal Services Authority. The second floor is dedicated to Mediation Center of the High Court of Odisha. And the top floor is dedicated to the Arbitration Center of High Court of Odisha. We will first move to the Arbitration Center of High Court of Odisha. This is our arbitration room. This is the chair for the arbitrator. And this is even our arbitration proceeding can be taken through virtual mode. Look at the TV. If any party wants to take part in the arbitration proceeding through virtual mode, it can also take part. This place for meant for the both the parties. Any honorable judge who has retired from the High Court is the declared arbitrator. Any advocate having a practice of 25 years, then he can apply for the post of arbitrator. This is a mediation center. Generally, in mediation, the family matters, small or petty civil matters, or even small uh, contractual matters are decided. Especially, the family matters are given high priority to decide through mediation. In arbitration, the arbitrator decides a dispute between the parties. Both the parties present their respective claims and documents. But in mediation, a mediator facilitates for disposing the dispute between the parties in an amicable manner by conciliation, by talking, rounds of talking and uh, identifying the problem, how the problem can be solved. The mediator who is a trained person facilitates all these things and sometimes we also take help of counsellors and some of the psychologists even. The prime function of legal services institution is awareness, legal awareness among people and providing free legal aid to poor. A person having income of less than 3 lakhs per annum is entitled to free legal aid. Any person belonging to the category of ST and SC is also entitled to free legal aid. A woman is also entitled to free legal aid. This is our uh, preamble. How many of are you about the preamble? Everyone? Is it in your civics? Article 39A, this is the base on which our legal services institution were created. The legal services institution at the national level, it's National Legal Service Authority. At state level, it's State's Legal Services Authority. At district level, it's District Legal Service Authority. And at Taluka level, it's Taluk Legal Services Committee. This is Odisha State Legal Service Authority. We have DLSA, as I have stated you, District Legal Service Authority. Naya Sanjog, Naya Sanjog means it's a phone number. 1516, where any person can call and seek legal advice if he wants. And I have a TLA, permanent local dollars, I have already told you. TLSC, Taluk Legal Services Committee, Legal Aid Clinics. We have also legal aid clinics at jail, hospital, at village level, and STAC cell. Generally, if a person goes to jail where their family members are not cooperating or not uh, helping him, then a free legal aid can also be provided to that person. STSC sales means a person in the category of STSC, he can move to that cell to redress his grievances in connection to legal side. We have also front office. Front office means at a, every district legal service authority, a lawyer is appointed during the official hours to give answer to any person who is asking about his legal problems. We have more than 600 schools registered under our school legal literacy program where a class student of 8 and 9 are eligible to be part of the school legal literacy club. Through school legal literacy club, we teach young students about law and basics of law. As I have already stated you, this is our organogram. One High Court Legal Services Committee is there who is taking those cases pending before the High Court. 
whether any person is entitled to free legal aid at the high court level then the high court legal services committee decides all those things we have 30 district mediation centers and we have 30 district legal services authority means at and in odisha we have 30 districts and in each district we have our district legal services authority institutions there are 22 permanent continuous local adalas in our state i have shown you katak this one not in 30 district in 22 district we have our uh, permanent and continuous local adalas a very good afternoon to all of you uh, we are deeply privileged to have with us uh, honorable justice arindam sinha sir honorable judge of the odisha high court as you have been told that learning is a regular process the same principle is also applicable to we the judicial officers the honorable supreme court emphasized on a systematic training for judicial officers on different fronts and that paved the path for establishment of judicial academies it's a very beautiful academy with all modern infrastructures of smart classrooms interactive classes and it's a wi-fi campus we have all these state-of-the-art technologies we have a very beautiful legal library both online and offline we offer training to judicial officers at three different levels one at the beginning level called induction training program for the newly recruited civil judges and the district judges who are directly recruited and thereafter we conduct mid-career trainings and also advanced career trainings we do offer training programs for different stakeholders such as advocates prosecutors uh, police officers and other stakeholders who are with us and with these words I, once again i welcome all of you i once again request my lord to kindly address the gathering so i was told yesterday by or rather i was conveyed the <coughs> uh, wish of the chief justice that you all are coming here i have been given the privilege i am very happy to be with you it's been a long time since I was in school and I don't like getting old and seeing you I'm again energized. Yes, and I also notice that there are more girls than boys. Why? What happened to the boys? Hmm? In DAV school, they're losing out to the girls. In our time, in when I went to school, our mine was also a co-ed school. In a class of 30, we had 10 girls and 20 boys. 20 boys running after 10 girls. They had the choice. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, you are at the school level. What class are you in? 11, 12. All right. So you are approaching the crossroad where you have to decide what you want. So shall we take this session as a counselling session as to what questions you can ask me and I can answer you to counsel you and nudge you towards joining the legal profession? Sir, so for my <coughs> preference, I would go for lawyer to be a criminal lawyer. I'm really interested in all that stuff. Criminal lawyer, yes, because you see, crime. There are two kinds of, this is a very rare opportunity. When I sit in the bench, the learned advocates, they argue, I have to listen. I am now here where I can say something and you will listen. <laughs> so I will tell you. There are two broad categories of practice of law. One is the criminal law and the other is the civil law. In the criminal law, what happens is, a person is accused of having committed a crime. A crime is something that is against society. If you want to have a good society, ideally there should be no crime. If you have a bicycle, you should be able to leave it beside the lamppost and come in here and spend some time, go back and find it there. It should not be stolen. That's the ideal thing about society. So you see, if you do civil cases, it's all about strategy. Why do I file a case? Because you see, it is not like criminal, where there is an offense against society. And it's all about evidence and the punishment provisions. You have the procedure of trial given in the criminal procedure code. 
you have the offenses and the conviction provisions in the Indian Penal Code and you have the Evidence Act to regulate the procedure and see whether the judge would find that the crime has been proved. So far as civil is concerned, there are all kinds of reasons that people in initiate a proceeding for. And we have inherited from the British what is known as the writ jurisdiction, Article 226. There are two articles really. One is Article 32, that is the article in the Constitution which allows for enforcement of fundamental rights and for that you can directly approach the Supreme Court. Article 32, if you think that your fundamental right has been infringed, violated, you can directly approach the Supreme Court. You see the hierarchy of courts are like this. You have the first approachable court. That can be in the outlying station. It can be the district court. And in rare cases, it can even be the high court. Otherwise, the high court is a court of appeal. The original case is filed in a court below and it finds its way in appeal to the high court. But the writ jurisdiction is original to all high courts. And if I can say so, the writ jurisdiction is wider than Article 32. Article 32 where you can approach the Supreme Court for the first time without having filed a case as elsewhere is for enforcement of fundamental rights. Article 26, 226 is for enforcement of a legal right. That's much wider than Article 32 because a legal right can be any kind of right, much more than <laughs> A fundamental right. So you will find in the Constitution what are your fundamental rights and there are a lot of cases nowadays regarding what is a fundamental right. Now the concept of a right is laced with restriction. You cannot have an unfettered right because discipline is a very important word in the dictionary. Because freedom becomes license. So you see everything you do there must be a little bit of regulation so of all the cases that you have judged which was the most difficult to judge and why hey, this is a standard question <laughs> huh? difficult case is very complicated i'll be able to tell you in a short while so complicated questions in civil law yes, sir, civil is law. difficult but i did a criminal case i'll tell you the dispute was between neighbors. There was resistance to discharge of water from one person's house to the other. And this created animosity. Now the person from whose house the water was being discharged to the other person's house, that person had gone out in the morning to work. And he returned in the afternoon. He met with his neighbor and his wife midway. <coughs> there was an altercation and there was violence and he sustained fatal injuries and the man died. The charge was murder. The defense was manslaughter. Manslaughter is sudden grave provocation and reaction. Not cold-blooded motive. Murder is you calculate, you want to kill somebody, you plot it. Cold-blooded murder. That brings in the worst, the maximum punishment. And in India we still have execution, hanging. So the defense was that we met when he was coming back. And one thing led to another and we had a little bit of a fight and it was an accident. It's not murder. The case at trial resulted in conviction of the accused. The matter came up for appeal. I was junior in the division bench to my senior and there was a pretty girl who was arguing the case <laughs> or had really come to ask for adjournment on behalf of a senior. 
my senior judge said nothing doing. You argue for whatever you can and we are going to hear the matter and decide it today itself. And she opened the brief and she did the best she could. And then in the just before lunch, the senior came and tried to improve on that. Meantime, having got information that there is not going to be any adjournment. And we rose at lunch. My senior told me, Aap likhe judgment? <laughs> so you see, me as a civil guy, I was told to write a criminal judgment. Now I thought, from the evidence that was there, that the going and coming of this man from work was a known thing. Now, if you are objecting to water effluent from your neighbor's house, what were you doing there? Yes, and they had with themselves bamboo stick. Now, you just don't find bamboo sticks lying around. So I went with the reasoning of the trial court and I confirmed that there was motive and planning to apprehend this guy. And things may have got out of hand and it may have resulted in death, but it amounts to murder. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Anything, any, any sir. other profession anybody wants is thinking about? Psychology. You're again into crime. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> you are again into crime. Because if you get into the psychology, you will know who did it and why. You can, you can make a contribution in addressing people who think that life is useless. Sir. And they have suicidal tendencies. Yes, you can do a lot of work out there. No artistically minded people amongst you? A little bit of art, artist, artistic inclination you should try and have at least as a hobby. You can doodle, you can just get a palette of paint and paintbrush and just, just do whatever you want, like let it flow. You see, do not get bogged down by these devices that we have nowadays. Try and get out of it, be real, have real friends, have real experiences. Yes. Sir, it always happens that uh, we get ethical dilemmas. When you we get? Ethical dilemma. Yes. A confusion between like what should be right and what I personally think should be right. And that's something that everyone gets. So being a judge, like how do you think, like, how do you deal with ethical dilemmas? Mm. You see, what happens is, there is the law. And generally, the law has an answer uh, to the dispute that is there before the judge. We are precedent oriented. Now, human nature is not very different and history repeats itself. So, you have lawyers in their chambers, they have a lot of books. These are all already decided cases. And whatever dispute you have at present, unless it is a very modern and new thing, it will generally fall into the category of a case already decided. But then again, you can be confronted with a situation where a judge thinks that this is what should be. But the law doesn't allow him to do it. My answer to you there is, I have a benefit. I was a lawyer. I apply my lawyer skills to apply the law in such a way that I am able to do to my conscience justice. That is how I look at it. You see, when I was a lawyer, all the lousy bad cases nobody would touch and the, more, the client cannot pay the fee used to come to me. Only when you are a very senior and renowned lawyer do you get a case that is easy. You just appear in court and you get your fee. When you are struggling as a lawyer, you don't get a good case. You get the worst case nobody will touch. And the case of a person who doesn't have the capacity to pay a fee. So that's the kind of cases I dealt with. So sitting as a judge and finding a bad case is no problem for me. I apply the law. <laughs> All right.
you guys are going to now go where? Back to school. Your, the school will provide you lunch or you carrying tiffin? <laughs> yes? Oh, you have arranged lunch for them? Oh, you have arranged lunch for them? So the Judicial Academy, apart from teaching a lot of things, also is hospitable. Yes? Yes. <laughs> Alright, anything else? Sir, I have a question. Yes? Uh, sir, I aspire to become a judge someday, so hmm. I wonder... You see, let me... Uh, Alright, uh, what is your total full sir, question? I just sit and wonder ki how will I patiently listen both the parties and then deliver a judgement? Because it's very hectic. I can't uh, listen properly then. It's no, moreover no. I feel irritated, impatient. You see, um, so far as the Evidence Act is concerned, it does allow the judge, empower the judge to ask a question in the quest for truth. But when I was in the bar, meaning when I was a lawyer and I had my junior with me, and our witness was being cross-examined by the other side. Now the other side was doing a very bad job. Was not able to ask a question to our witness for which the witness was uncomfortable. He was happy. He had made his case and he was standing there and answering the questions that were coming from the cross-examining lawyer. And then the judge started asking questions and uncomfortable questions. So my junior wrote a slip of paper, he wrote and put it in front of me that a judge should keep quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so now that I am a judge, I remember that incident. Whenever I feel like asking a question, I don't ask. <laughs> now the thing is, if you look at the law as a career option, you have two ways of going about it. One is the judicial service. If you write an exam, and you qualify, you can start <coughs> at the lowest level as a judge. Or you can try your hand at practicing. Now if you practice and after a while there are the rules provide, you can again apply to join the judiciary. At the district judge level, as you were saying, there is here in the academy provision for training of entry level di district judges because they are entering the cadre at that stage, the service at, at that stage. So after you put in, I think it is seven years seven, of practice. Seven 35, years of practice, huh? Age 35, seven years of practice. Age 35 years old and seven years of practice. You can again take that, uh, that, that, that category exam and you can enter the service as a judge at a district judge level. Or you can carry on on your way in practice and like me, be invited to the bench. So set your sights like that. All right, so let's go for. Thank I'm you, hungry. Sir. <laughs>